thank you so much for chatting to me today. Um, how have you been since the season ended? And obviously that um, that final at Queen's Um, one word for covering. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> Um, no, we've had great celebrations, you know, really enjoyed it as a team together and yeah, just recovering now from it. Obviously, it was kind of a magical season for Gloucester, winning that final after not kind of finishing in those top four places before. Just how do you catch on to kind of feel the season went for yourself and also for the club, obviously, topping off with a win? Yeah, it's it's been huge. Like last season, especially, you know, we look back and we just came on the wrong side of like really close scores quite a lot. Um which as a player like can be quite frustrating and really like downgrading. Like it's really tough. You do so well. And I think sometimes we think we're chasing a game when actually we're ahead. So I think the mindset has changed this year. Like when we are ahead, we just need to keep composure and keep doing us rather than panicking. Um, so I think like that's probably been a big change this year. And um, yeah, after some, some close losses last year to coming away with some great results this year and, you know, getting a really good streak of wins and, um, well, first of all, obviously finishing top of the league and then, and then finishing off winning the Prem as well is it's still surreal, if I'm honest. It's, it's been amazing to be a part of this club and to see it grow from strength to strength each year and finally getting that win under our belt is it's honestly just been amazing. How important have people like Sean Lynn and Mo Hunt, Zoe Allcroft been in that kind of shift of mindset? Absolutely huge. Like, I think Lenny's just got it right as a coach, you know, starting with him. He's... He just understands us as people, not just players. And I think that's so important to have that relationship with a player coach, um, as in, but sorry, between a player coach. He's so understanding of like us as individuals, whether we're the Welsh girls, um, internationals, non-internationals, you know, other nations, people working. To find that balance sometimes in a semi-professional environment is really, really tough. But I think honestly, he's just got it right. And um uh, yeah, finally, like this year, you can see like with the, with the introduction of like new coaches, you know, building on our staff members, also the introduction of like Sarah Beckett, Alex Matthews, certain girls coming into the squad. We say it all the time. We've had a core group of girls in this squad. Not much has really changed other than the addition of one or two players, but the impact they've brought to that squad and what we've achieved this season together. Um, yeah, has just been pretty amazing. But um. Yeah, more so, you know, such leaders on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. We have team meetings and we have player-led meetings and you'll you'll see those of the girls that stand up to take those meetings and, re and really, you know, put us in the right way. So, um, honestly, they've been absolutely huge. As core captains, they've been amazing. And as well, like Linny understanding us as players, the girls understand us as, as people as well. So we're such a close little team um, that, that really, I think, you can see that on the pitch, like we're a close team off the pitch that just helps us like enjoy playing with friends basically on the day when we play with them. Obviously, you can if you can kind of narrow down to a few kind of favourite moments or favourite games I've seen, obviously the final's going to pin quite highly in that. But if you could kind of pick a few other like favourite moments from the season or favourite games, what would you kind of narrow them down to? Um, straight away um, would probably be that Sarri's away game for us. And I know a lot of people say like they didn't have their full strength team, but neither did we. You know, we all had people resting, like people coming in and out. But honestly, to to put over fifty points against such a strong Sari side, I think at that point I knew it was going to be a good season for us. I just felt like things started to click in. You know, Flaky George taking taking lead in that ten position. You know, just really trying to play an expansive game of rugby. Like like for me as a player, like I kind of love that vibe. And um, with the players that we had this season. I think it was that game for me that just made me realise like we're, we're going on a journey here and it's going to be one to remember. Um, and then, yeah, of course, the final. I, I, Well, and the semi for me, actually. So I've never actually been in knockout rugby before. So since being with um, Gloucester Harvey, we've obviously just missed out on top four a couple of times um, and finishing in that mid-table. So the semi for me was a bit of a mindset like shift. Like I've never been in that sort of knockout rugby. Um, so... Yeah, I, I had a couple of like mishaps that day. Like I think just needed to settle myself. So the semi was a huge one. I just didn't know what to do when we won. I was like, oh my gosh, because now we got the final to deal with as well. And um, yeah, luckily enough, we we just performed on those days and um, came away with the wins and won the league. Won, won, won the Allianz Prem. Woo! <laughs> obviously the final just glossed a few special things kind of in the build to it. Renaming the ground to Queen's Home, the team sheet announcement from the men. Just how important was it for the club to kind of show that one club, one family kind of motto just so much? 
honestly, it, it's been absolutely huge and credit to Gloucester Rugby as well. They've really come on board with us this, this season. And, you know, it definitely helps that now we're winning, now we're being names. Like, you know, they're, they're really pushing ahead with us. And, like, I just hope that we keep that that relationship building. Um, I didn't know about the men pronouncing our team shirts until it was announced. And I just thought that was such a lovely touch. Like, um, just really, really special. And like you can see, you can see this that one club like really building together. And um as much as people were saying it was a home ground for us, yes, we had like a slight home advantage, but um, you know, in previous years that hasn't been home for us. That's just been a one-off game that's like lucky we're play we're playing at King's home. So um to really, you know, stamp our ground there this season and play there a couple of times and get the semi and final there as well. It's been huge and hopefully we'll see more games um, heading into that stadium. But yeah, the little touch of Queen's home for the week. And I just thought they were nice like little ideas that like, you know, really, really got um, social media, you know, talk, talking about it and like, yeah, just got our, got our game out there really. And that's what we need to do about for women's rugby is, is just do what we can to get it out there. So the little touches were truly amazing and we really do feel that like that one team is way more of a thing this season and um you know it's great to be on board with Gloucester I think Gloucester is a special place to be and I think we're still growing to something even bigger so yeah super excited and near enough 10k people watching a game a final of not just an international women's rugby but a kind of domestic women's rugby just how special was that as well the noise was just like crazy for, for, for our game like you say domestic rugby um you see the crowds internationals are bringing in now especially england i i keep saying it they are leading the way it's really truly amazing to see you know this the spectators and things they're getting in and that's why i feel so lucky that so many of us can come and play in this alliance prem um so yeah for me like having that crowd there and just having that noise it really lifts you it really like it's mad to think a standalone women's game domestic had maybe ten thousand people and when you sit back and think about it, they're there purely to watch us. There's no, we're not, we're not a, you know, show opener. We're, we're, it's purely for us. And I just think to look back now and reflect on that is, is you, the game's exciting. The game is growing. And um, the biggest change for me since the final is a couple of times you're just walking around Gloucester, people have come up to us and just been like, oh my gosh, the Gloucester girls. Like um, a couple of people have said that's their first game they came to watch in the final. And I just thought it's mad speaking to these people. It literally takes one game one game to come and watch women's rugby and then your opinion changes on it completely. So, uh, yeah, it's just amazing. Kind of going back to the season, if you kind of pick a Gloucester player who's your player of the season, who would you who would have got your vote or who did get your vote? Um, there's honestly so many I could choose from. Like, we've got so many leaders in our group, like easily more, more is up there. Zoe Allcroft, Beth and Lewis, I think has been amazing this year, like taking lead of that. Um, Rachel Lund, I think, has really come into her own this season, you know, nailing down that 13 shirt with Hannah's absence of um, injury and things. Like, we've had so many players, Al Matthews coming in, but um, our, our player of the season was um, Sarah Beckett. I just think the go forward that she gave us from the back of the scrum and, like, everything she brings with, like, she, she, she's a leader in so many different ways, but on the pitch and off the pitch in the way she speaks as well. She speaks when it's needed. And, um, yeah, I, th I just think she's been such a huge impact to the squad. What, what, what about if you could pick someone from kind of not at Gloucester in the rest of the league, who would you kind of give your other player of the season to? Oh my gosh. Oh, sorry, can I just go back as well? One player I didn't mention yeah, was Lady George. Yeah. Honestly, um, she's another one as well. Her, if I could pick a forward and a back from Gloucester, yeah. Sarah Beckett would be my forward and Lady George <laughs> 100% would be my back. She has been immense. Um, but yes, in the other, in the rest of the teams, oh my gosh, the, honestly, the there's so many good players. Like, you look at Kate Zachary. You know, she's known her, her trade to be back row. She's playing out in the centre and absolutely nailing it. Like, just running through people for fun. Like, honestly, just players like that. Like, such a rugby brain. Oh, my gosh, you've got so many girls. So many names come to my head. But Kate Zachary is honestly the one that just stood out for me then. Like, mm -hmm. Exeter, you know, such a force to be reckoned with. And rightly so they made their way to the final again this season and, and right like deserved you know you look at all the stats and things like they're the top in attack and defense like they've been immense this season and I think Kate Zachary has been a huge leader for them so yeah I think I'm gonna have to go with Kate Zachary. And kind of just looking ahead to next season what kind of your aspirations for the year not just for yourself but also what Gloucester's kind of aspirations for next year as well? I mean to keep the foot on the gas and just keep on going um you know, we've had such a good season this year, but there's still so many wrongs to right as well. You know, we've had some losses, 
um, some performances that luckily we still got the win, but are not performances that we usually put out there. So I think for us, it's just to build on ourselves and build a black brand of rugby that we really want to be proud of um, and ultimately just put performances out there each week. Um, and, and yeah, aim for that top four and, and go to reclaim the title again, really. Um, I don't see why, why it wouldn't be that, you know? So yeah, I think, like I say, you know, we're building something special. We're still building. And yes, we've got the win this year, but it doesn't stop now. We don't rest. We, we, we go again after internationals. Are there any kind of players who haven't maybe featured as much this year, who should we be keeping an eye out for next year? Do you know, that's what's amazing about um, Hartbury as well, is that obviously we've got the player pathway coming through with the college, the university and things. Um, sadly, Connie Powell's left us this season. She's she's made her way to Harlequins, which I think will be really exciting for her. Um, but like, you know, people like Amy Dale, girls who um, are coming through the system, Amy Dale has been immense in that um, Bucks championship. And she's been, I think, a key player for them. And she's a great little hooker, great player, um, knows the game quite well, quite cheeky around the pitch. So I think for me in my position as well, like she's going to be biting, biting on our heels to come and get, come get a shirt. And um, it's players like that, I think, that I would say look out for. Yeah, Amy Dale's a huge one that jumped straight mm. to my head. And quickly, just to go back to the final, obviously the Gloucester girls had names, well, Exeter did as well, had their names in the back of the shirt. Just that's another kind of touch to show how much women's rugby is growing. So how important is that to have you kind of, oh, this is my shirt, I've got this in my back, it's a special moment it's absolutely huge like I always say like regardless I as long as I get a shirt like I'm playing a pivotal part like I think the game has grown now you haven't just got starters and people on the bench you've got starters and you've got finishers it's such a squad effort um but no like you know just having it's not even knowing that it's my shirt it's like it's my family's name on the back of that shirt and I just think after all the years of sacrifice especially in women's rugby that we've had like being able to represent our family name and make your like you know make making your family proud as well it's it's absolutely huge and it's such a special moment and yeah being able to keep that shirt from the final as well with with our names on the back it's it's um yeah truly special i can't think of any other word than it's just honestly special and just makes me so proud is it going to be getting framed oh 100 percent. yeah <laughs> definitely i might have to give it a wash first but um <laughs> A couple of the girls wore them out after after the final. So um, I had mine on for a little bit. Lots of alcohol dripped on it. So I thought, yeah, let's give it a wash and then we'll frame it. <laughs> and finally, just if you could kind of sum up the season and narrow it down to three words, what three words would you be picking? Oh, my gosh. Um, can I just say dream come true? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> three words. Honestly... Yeah. It's it's been an amazing season, like immense, like so many words come come to my head. But honestly, it's been a dream this season. You know, the girls we've had in, the togetherness that we've had this season, the coaching staff as well involved in that. It's honestly just a dream come true, and hopefully, we can have more dreams to come. Perfect. Thank you so much for chatting to us today. <laughs> Congratulations for winning Thank the Prem Fifteens, and then best of luck for next season and kind of pre-season internationals and before we start next year. No, amazing. Thank you so much for speaking. <laughs>